Hey guys, my name is Colton, as the intro would lead to. Uh, I'm your gun guy here from National Guns and Firearms. You can see on the mug and uh, on the shirt, I'm gonna have a little bit of my coffee here. Today we're gonna talk about something very special in our first episode. We're gonna talk about a very uh, classic Colt gun, right? Hence the name, uh, Colton and Colt. That's my uh, name here. We have um, this display case here, it's very beautiful. Chloe, we're not gonna need you here today. Uh, my cat is uh, very eager to be in the podcast, video cast as well. We have what's kind of really cool, it's a 1911 Colt, right? Let me take it out of the bag. This is a Colt M1911. Um, what's special about this is this was actually manufactured in 1918, uh, if you look up the serial numbers. And what's cool about this is this was a World War II model, if you can tell. It says United States property. And on the flip side, model of, uh, model 1911, pardon me, model of 1911 U.S. Uh, Army. So this is what you would get um, if you were in World War II. Uh, this would be your standard issue um, revolver, not revolver, pardon me. This would be your standard issue equipment here. The model 1911 from Colt. Now you can obviously tell if you're a gun guy, you can tell these are not the standard grips. I changed out the grips. Uh, uh, usually you'll see this with diamond grips uh, coming from these screws you'll have a diamond pattern coming down and a diamond pattern coming up. Um, real wood grips those on the changed out grips. Uh, still have the old grips um, in the vault somewhere. But this is your basically a pretty, pretty cool, very special gun. Um, has original patents, your Hartford, Connecticut Colt logo, uh, US government property, Model 1911 of the U.S. Army. Now, this is before all the Colt Serpent guns came out. You know, your Boa, your King Cobra, your Python, uh, your Diamondback. This was um, a very special gun. Has the classic beaver tail, of which basically is a 1911. Has this safety here, your grip safety. What's different between this and your Model 1911A a, pardon me, my model 1911A1 and the M1911 is basically this butt piece here. On the model 1911A1, this has more of a curvature to it. Maybe like a, a very small oval shape. Um, and that would uh, be signify, sorry, I can't think of the words right now, signify that it was a model 1911A1. This is your model 1911, probably one of the very first issued um, this was produced in 1918, as I said earlier. Now, this model first came out in World War I. Um, I believe 1913-ish is when they first started producing this. Um, but in World War II, they basically produced all M1911A1s. My theory, and I can't confirm this, um, is that this was an overproduction from World War I and it sat around somewhere and was given to um, one of the officers in World War II. This came to us uh, through basically an estate sale type situation. Um, an older woman wanted to get rid of it, didn't know any history behind it, but back then you could, uh, some of the officers were given their original equipment that they used in World War II, World War I, they were able to keep this. And I've heard in some cases of, guys jumping trains and, and keeping their M16s or basically M4A1s uh, as well. Um, um, haven't come across any of those that have government models stamped on it or US, uh, United States property stamped on it. This is just one of the variations. Um, it's legal to have this, of course, and at the time they were giving these guys, uh, they were able to keep their original equipment from war, which is pretty cool. This is a nice piece of history, uh, still, has the Parkerizing on it. You can see it's not blued, it's what's called Parkerized, um, which also is the same effect as bluing almost. Uh, it's an anti-corrosion material. 
Very cool. We're gonna get this gun um, out on the range. You see in our intro, we do a bunch of firearm stuff, uh, firearm news, reviews. Uh, in our field test, in our range test, we'll actually test this out and uh, show you guys what it's like to shoot this bad boy in 4K uh, in one of our range tests. Very beautiful. Um, the Colt logo on the grips, like I said, these are not original grips. We still have the old grips that have a diamond pattern. You'll see a diamond shape uh, on the grips, but uh, these are changed out, still wood. That's another way you can tell whether this is a uh, World, World War II production, the A1 or a non, uh, or the M1911 is, I believe that, you can correct me if I'm wrong, the A1 had um, some sort of synthetic uh, stock uh, grips, whereas the real 19, M1911s uh, had a wood grip. Um, very cool piece of history right here. Um, not too many times you come across something like this. And what you can tell is basically now you see modern 1911s from SIG, from Ruger, from all these companies. Uh, I think Kimber, everybody has one. But the design really stayed the same. It still looks beautiful. Uh, the parkerizing has helped keep this non-corrosive, uh, um, that parkerizing non-corrosive treatment has made this gun still look beautiful to this day. I could polish this up to stainless here. Has obviously your, uh, your clip here for the bottom, beaver tail, grip safety, right? Which is always, uh, if you have a 1911, it's always hard to, I always found it hard to, you know, decock this thing with one hand, I don't know, maybe you guys are better at it than I am or figured out a way, um, but it's very tricky for me to do it. Very cool gun, fits in your hand very well. The beaver tail obviously goes over your hand here. You have your clip, which <laughs> if you can see this clip in 4K is pretty dirty. This is uh, original equipment, original clip. So that's why that looks like that. The spring is a little bit uh, gooed up. I'll have to clean that up. Pardon me, but you know, this is a really interesting gun, really uh, interesting part of history. Let's see if I can get it back in. There we go. This is something um, where dreams started. You know, this was one of the original guns that Colt made. This is before all the serpentness and the, and the pythons and all that craziness, King Cobras and, and um, the serpent guns. But this is what kind of started it off for Colt. This model here, and to this day, they're still copying this new model. Um, like I said, other manufacturers love this model. This is a classic, the 1911 platform is a classic American gun, classic gun through history, World War I, World War II. Um, and, um, you know, was basically, basically kind of replaced out, I think, uh, by the Beretta 92F later in its history, but when we get this on the field, you'll see why everybody seems to love this gun. Highly accurate, highly reliable. This is mine, uh, manufactured in 1918, and it's 2016 now, so 98 years ago, uh, which is very crazy to say, right? This gun was manufactured, um, and it still looks great today. I uh, haven't fired it in a while but still highly accurate. It doesn't have the skeletonized uh, trigger, just your standard trigger. Um, some of them you can see will get decked out and the officer guns will have a gold trigger here, or you know some of the newer models will have the skeletonized, which has those three holes or those holes in the trigger. Um, you can highly modify these things. Um, classic gun. Now this is, you know, basically where it all started, but now you kind of see these and you can see them chambered in 22. Uh, chambered in nine millimeter and chambered in 45. Um, but this is your standard, your standard issue here. Very cool, very um, iconic gun of history. I'm looking over here, I'm looking at some notes. It's, um, it originated in the late 1890s as a result of a search for a suitable self-loading pistol and it replaced a, a variety of the revolvers um, at the time, now this was designed by John Browning um, in 1911 is what Wikipedia is saying, and 1924 for the A1, right? That has the oval hump, synthetic uh, grips here. This is, um, 
one of the originals, like I said. Now they come in different size models, right? This would probably be considered, well, this is the government model, so this is the longest uh, you're gonna get. Uh, the commander model is just a little bit shorter at 4.25 inches. This is the five inch uh, model, the government model. You have the commander's model at 4.25 inch, four and a quarter inch. And then you have the very small officer's model in uh, a three and a half inch, which uh, I've never seen an officer's model uh, in hand, but uh, that's pretty small for three and a half inches. Now this is your 45, this is chambered in 45 ACP automatic Colt pistol. I don't know why they chose ACP automatic Colt pistol is what it means. This is chambered in 45. Uh, officers uh, model also chambered 45 and your commander model also chambered in 45. Very iconic gun. We'll get this on the range. Like I said, this is just a small preview. Very light. Um, well, I mean, it's only uh, about a few pounds here. Feels good in your hand. Uh, shot this before, not too much uh, recoil. Colt makes an iconic gun. And although now they're, um, you know, maybe uh, not doing so well, they still have this classic gun. And we're going to get some of the Serpent guns on here as well. Some, maybe one of those little Diamondback revolvers, uh, which are pretty cool. The Serpent guns are another piece of iconic history and really cool. King Cobra. Obviously, everybody knows about the Python, right? From, you know, video games to life. Uh, the Python's a classic. Um, but... This is going to be the end of this, guys. Just want to show you this Model 1911 U.S. Army, property of the U.S. government, uh, 1911. One of the originals. This is not an A1. This is an M1911. Really good piece of history. I can't tell you if it actually uh, involved any, um, you know, battles or war or anything like that or what kind of action this saw. Uh, we got it from... An older lady who wanted to get rid of it didn't know really what it was all about but uh, this is something truly special great piece of history and a great uh, piece of uh, iconic uh, artwork you know this is this is a standardized gun now that was designed 1911 uh, by John Browning which is uh, over a hundred years ago it's 2016 so five a hundred um, <laughs> A hundred, you're gonna test my ability to do math right here. A hundred and um, five years uh, ago, this was designed, and in the 1890s, it was thought up. So this is quite the iconic gun. All right, guys, my name is Colton from National Guns and Firearms. Check out the mug on the shirt. Uh, I'll link up some stuff if you wanna get one of these mugs or the t-shirts, but we're gonna be doing gun reviews, firearm news. Uh, range test basically your go-to spot for guns and high res 4k action coming to you um, We'll do episodes all the time. This is kind of your first episode and I wanted to kind of show something really truly special here um, Since uh, my name is Colton uh, I'll be rolling with this Colt and various other Colts that I'll bring on to the show when we do our range tests uh, I'll be always packing a Colt um, and it'll be something really cool. We have a bunch of different Colts that we want to show you. Um, and Colt has been an iconic gun, you know, through time. It uh, has been an American classic. They have a bunch of revolvers that are, you know, won many different uh, victories through history. Very iconic and classic guns. All right, guys, my name is Colton with, uh, I don't know, we haven't come up with a name yet, so maybe we'll just call it GunCast for now. Um, from National Guns and Firearms. You can check us out at nationalgunsandfirearms.com uh, where you can buy any gun you want uh, that we have. We also can special order you in guns. Uh, we do gun trust, anything basically to do with guns. Uh, we can get it for you and, and do it with a smile. All right, guys, this is episode one of GunCast. I will see you later for episode two where we talk about the purpose and uh, needs of gun trust, NFA, National Firearms Act gun trust. What is changed in uh, the new rule that's coming out July 16th of this year, 2016? What it means to you, how it's going to affect you with your gun trust and future gun trust and future class three purchases uh, like SBRs, silencers, etc. But that will be on the next episode, so check that out next week. All right, guys, my name is Colton once again, and we'll see you later.